In this module you'll get an overview of the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code, section 2, parts A and D, which cover various aspects but first some historical background. In 1916 the ASME appointed a subcommittee to study and confer with the ASTM, the American Society for Testing and Materials. As a result, some specifications in the ASME BPVC come from the ASTM while other material was prepared by the Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code Committees. Subsequently, through cooperative action, these were modified and identified as ASTM specifications. Therefore, Section 2, Parts A and B contain much material which is identical to corresponding material in the ASTM specifications. Other material has been modified for usage of the code. A material with ASTM standards starts with the letter A, while that of the ASME start with the letters SA. The ASME BPVC Section 2 has been divided into four parts. Part A, Ferrous Material Specifications. Part B, Non-Ferrous Material Specifications. Part C, Specification for welding rods, electrodes and filler metals. Part D. Properties of materials. Parts A, B and C cover the specifications of materials like their chemical compositions and ordering information. Part D covers their physical properties like the ones shown. Parts A. B and C generally help in material selection and procurement while Part D is most useful in the design process. In this module we'll focus on Parts A and D. The goal in studying Part A will be to learn how to read a specification of a material. You'll be exposed to different parts of a typical specification like scope of usage, general requirements, ordering information, specifics related to manufacturing and testing, and chemical composition. We'll look at a commonly used material specification, SA 516. Once you know how to read this specification, you'll be able to read the others by yourself. In Part D, you'll learn how to read stress tables and learn to determine maximum allowable stresses, minimum tensile and yield strengths and temperature limits. You'll be exposed to physical properties tables which cover thermal expansion, thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity and modulus of elasticity. You'll get a brief overview of charts and tables which are useful for thickness calculations. These we'll covered in greater detail in the module on Section 8, Division 1. Now let's move to the first objective, understanding material specifications. Typical title of a specification indicates the type of product form, general material name, application and applicability. So, SA 516 is a specification for pressure vessel plates made of the material carbon steel and to be used for moderate and low temperature services. It includes logos of the ASME as well as the ASTM and is identical to the ASTM specification A516. The M stands for metric. So, this specification is available in imperial as well as metric units. The temperature limits including what we mean by moderate and low temperatures is covered in section 2 part D. In part A we find information about the scope of usage of this specification, general requirements for conformance with other specifications, specifics about the steelmaking, types of heat treatment recommended and details of the material's chemical composition and tensile testing requirements. Let's take a closer look at each of these. The key point mentioned in the scope is that SA 516 covers the use of carbon steel for welded pressure vessels where improved notch toughness is needed. It is available in four grades with corresponding tensile strength and maximum plate thickness is shown. Clause on general requirements and ordering specifies that the SA 516 needs to conform to the specification A20 of the ASTM standard. The A20 includes procedures for testing and retesting, permissible variations in dimensions and mass, quality and repair of defects, marking, loading, etc. Once you start using Section 2 regularly, 
you'll notice that specifications in this section often refer to some other general specification elsewhere where general requirements are outlined. The clause, materials and manufacture, covers the steelmaking practice. It includes a very important point that the plate manufactured under the SA 516 specification needs to be killed and should conform to the fine austenitic grain size requirement of the specification A20 from the ASTM. In steelmaking, killing refers to the procedure where free oxygen is removed from the material. Different types of heat treatment are recommended based on the thickness of the plates. Table 1 shows the requirements of the chemical composition of SA 516. To understand how to read the table, let's take an example. Say we have a plate of thickness less than half an inch or 12.5 millimeters. Then when we look at the table, we see that the most noticeable element is carbon. The maximum amounts of carbon content for different grades range from 0.18% for grade 55 to 0.27% for grade 70. The higher content in grade 70 is the reason for its higher tensile strength compared to that of grade 55. Other elements included in the SA 516 are manganese, phosphorus, sulfur and silicon. The table shows the percentages of these elements for heat analysis and product analysis. Heat analysis is the analysis of the chemical components while the material is in molten condition before it is formed into plate. Product analysis is done after the plate is formed. Tensile testing requirements are covered in Table 2. The purchaser of the material could also make additional requirements like the char PV notch impact test. Such standardization ensures that by simply knowing the specification number a mill can produce these materials. Let's quickly summarize what we've learned so far. Part A of Section 2 covers specifications for ferrous materials. A specification in Part A could require conformance with another specification elsewhere. A typical specification will cover O scope of usage, O general requirements, O ordering information, O specifics related to manufacturing and testing and O chemical composition. Now that you've seen how to read one specification, you'll be able to read any of the others without difficulty. Let's now move on to section 2, part D. Section 2 part D of the ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code covers the physical properties of the materials specified in parts A and B. It is divided into these sections. Subpart 1 includes stress tables which give us the maximum allowable stress for materials at different temperatures. The physical properties of these materials such as thermal expansion, modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio are found in subpart 2. Subpart 3 provides charts and tables for determining shell thickness of components under external pressure. And finally, mandatory and non-mandatory appendices provide the basis, guidelines, background information, etc. for content in subparts 1, 2 and 3. Tables 1a, 1b, 3, 5a and 5b cover allowable stresses while tables 2a, 2B and 4 cover design stress intensities. In this module, we'll review tables 1A and 1B in some detail. This will give you a good idea of how such tables are to be read. You'll then be able to use any of the other tables in your design activity. Table 1A gives maximum allowable stresses for ferrous materials used in section 1. Section 3 Classes 2 and 3, Section 8 Division 1 and Section 12. To order materials you should use their nominal compositions. For a given nominal composition, the table is arranged in increasing tensile strength. This is seen on the second page of the table where we find the minimum tensile strength, the minimum yield strength, and temperature limits of the material for different codes. We also see a reference to external pressure chart numbers and to notes. 
On pages 3 and 4 we find maximum allowable stresses at various temperatures as well as the time-dependent creep ranges which are found in italics. The topic of creep is covered in the module selection of materials. Table 1b gives maximum allowable stresses for non-ferrous materials used in section 1, section 3 classes 2 and 3, section 8 division 1 and section 12. The first materials listed in the table are aluminum alloys. These are followed by copper alloys, nickel alloys, and reactive and refractory metals and alloys. Table 1b gives ma maximum allowable stresses for non-ferrous materials used in section 1, section 3 classes 2 and 3, section 8 division 1 and section 12. The first materials listed in the table are aluminum alloys. These are followed by copper alloys, nickel alloys, and reactive and refractory metals and alloys. Like tables 1a and 1b, tables 3, 5a and 5b are also stress tables. Table 3 provides maximum allowable stresses for bolting materials. Table 5a gives us maximum allowable stresses for ferrous materials while table 5b gives us the same for non-ferrous materials. Both these are applicable to section 8, division 2 which includes alternate rules for the construction of pressure vessels. Tables 2a and 2b provide design stress intensities for ferrous and non-ferrous materials respectively. These are applicable section 3 which covers the rules for the construction of nuclear facility components. Table 4 gives design stress intensities for bolting materials. Finally, it'll be interesting to quickly see what tables U, U2 and Y1 provide. Table U gives us tensile strength values for ferrous and non-ferrous materials at different temperatures. Table U2 provides tensile strengths for special ferrous materials used in the construction of high-pressure vessels. These are covered Section 8, Division 3. And Table Y1 gives yield strength values for ferrous and non-ferrous materials at different temperatures. Subpart 2 of Section 2, Part D, includes the physical properties of most alloys used across all sections of the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code. Included in this subpart are tables on thermal expansion, thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity and various moduli of elasticity. These values are all listed as a function of temperature ranging from 20 degrees Celsius to 900 degrees Celsius. Subpart 2 also contains tables for density and Poisson's ratio for ferrous and non-ferrous alloys. Subpart 3 provides charts and tables for determining the shell thickness of components which are under external pressure. You'll get the chance to see some of these in the module on Section 8, Division 1 where we'll calculate the shell thickness of a vessel under external pressure. One of these is figure G you will use it to determine a factor called A, which you'll in turn use in the chart CS2 to determine another factor B. This factor B will then be used to calculate the maximum allowable external working pressure for a given thickness of the vessel. But more of all this when we're in the module on section 8, division 1. For now, let's move forward to see what's included in the appendices of section 2, part D. Mandatory appendices provide the basis for the establishment of the various values used in the tables and charts in Section 2, Part D. They also provide guidelines for the estimation of properties during the evaluation of new material or material which isn't covered in the ASME BPVC. Non-mandatory appendices provide background information which could be of use to the designer. Here's what we've learnt about Section 2, Part D stress tables are used to determine maximum allowable stresses, minimum tensile and yield strengths and temperature limits for ferrous and non-ferrous materials. Similarly, tables exist for determining design stress intensities.
Physical properties tables include values for thermal expansion, thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity and moduli of elasticity. Charts and tables for shell thickness are used in the calculation of shell thickness of components under external pressure. And finally, mandatory and non-mandatory appendices are useful for understanding the basis of values derived from the tables and to get relevant background information.